When you think of the term ADHD, what exactly comes to mind? If you envisage a young boy running around causing havoc, not paying attention in class, well, you aren't alone. For generations, it has been seen as a male issue. One of the reasons why it's massively underdiagnosed in women. Uh, now, thanks to a rise in awareness of female traits, women are receiving diagnoses later in life. Nadia has been on her own journey to try and find out once and for all why she has always felt just a little bit different. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder affects around 2.6 million people in the UK. My husband Mark is one of them, and I suspect I might be too. But while women are as likely to suffer with the condition as men, we only account for one in every three diagnoses. I'm planning to have my own assessment, but before that, I want to hear more from women who've been diagnosed later in life. I'm with care coordinator Jo, who found out she had ADHD at the age of 34 and delicatessen owner Debbie, who wasn't diagnosed until a few months ago at 54 years old, to find out more about their experiences. You're both late starters. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. Basically, <laughs> if you're not diagnosed as a child, then that's, that's late. I think my behaviour at school was, um, not so much when I was really quite young, but certainly going up into secondary school, I struggled with teachers, um, mainly. I struggled... Boredom. <laughs> Massively important. <laughs> Debbie, what was your journey to diagnosis? My son got diagnosed and said to me, you must go, Mum, because all my struggles are what you struggle with. Mm. I spent money we didn't have. A 50-odd year old, we've got a mortgage that we shouldn't have. That's my spending. Everything affected me really badly. I'd, I'd get a spiteful comment and I'd take it home and I'd cry and I'd... Mm. And it can it continue and continue and it to a point sometimes it did make me just wish I could just go to sleep and not wake up. The stats are there. It's just so shocking yeah, to me that scary. when you were told that you had it and that possibly all these things that you had anger with yourself or shame about, there was a reason for it. How are you left feeling? When my assessor said to me, I said to her, I'm really worried about getting this diagnosis mm. because I don't want it to be an excuse for how I've been. Wow. And she mm. says, it's not an excuse, it's a reason. So what, what would you say the best things that have happened for you having uh, got a diagnosis? I just wake up dancing every morning. As good I, as that. I, I, well, I don't quite dance, but my brain and my heart and everything is just dancing all the time. I'm oh. just happy all the time. If anyone said to me tomorrow, right, here's a pill, take it, and it will, it will wipe out your ADHD. I'd be like, get that, get that pill away from me. I don't want any right typical now. brain. Thank no, you. I don't. No, I really don't. My time with Joe and Debbie gave me lots of food for thought. I'm back home with Mark to talk about my reasons for wanting to find out if I have ADHD once and for all. You might laugh, but I do actually feel quite nervous about having this assessment. What? After going on and on about wanting to have it. I don't really understand why you're having it. What do you mean? Well, it's blindingly obvious that you've got ADHD. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's no, a, don't you don't say... need that. <laughs> You don't need anyone to tell you that. We all know no, that. No, but, I, but that. actually that is interesting because actually I do. There are so many things through my life that I want to forgive myself for. Wow. Behaviours. Oh, yeah. yeah. But what really frightens me is if I'm not, then what were all those behaviours about? We frustrate the hell out of each other all the time and I think it would just be nice to get some... Some, I mean, I think some peace. It would, it would give us some peace, wouldn't well, it? There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So now you've given me the reason for having it. Yeah. <laughs> Before my assessment can begin, I'm asked to fill out a questionnaire that will help determine how likely I am to have ADHD. My questionnaire reveals that I have several signs of the condition, so now I'm with Rebecca Whelan, who is going to carry out the rest of my assessment. So day to day, what do you like at giving it attention to detail, would you say? <sighs> I would say that I work really, really hard for any attention to detail that yeah. I manage to achieve. What about if something contains a lot of detail, say a letter, a report? Can you I'm read not those? very good at taking that in, no. Yeah. I quite often open a book in the middle, if that makes any sense. 
And I could really love a book, but I won't finish it. If you're trying to focus on something, do you ever find that, say, for example, your mind wanders off, you start thinking of things that are not related? So you get internally distracted by your it, own thoughts? If I was to describe it, it's like my brain's going along and then it just skips. Do you get bored quick? Very bored and very distracted. But the, the thing is, my brain can skip when I'm interested as well. It's a real thing of sadness with my girls because they talk to me about that. Mm. Like, you don't ever fully listen. Say if somebody wanted you to do something um, and give you a time limit to do it, would you be more likely to produce it at that time or not? Yeah. If it's last minute, I can, be, I can produce amazing things very fast. Under pressure. But if I'm given... Under pressure. Yeah. If you give me a month to do something, I'm going to do it in the last hour. Do you ever find you struggle to switch off? To, I couldn't sit quietly without noise. I have to have something on to relax. After answering many more questions about the way I've handled things throughout my childhood and adult life, it's on to the last part of the assessment. The final questions are around how you feel that the symptoms have affected you as a person, so in terms of your confidence and your self-esteem. If you scratch the surface, underneath there is total low self-esteem. Yeah. But I do an amazing job of holding myself up. Can you think of anything that you would like to change about the way that you do things day to day now? Years ago, I gave myself a lifetime ban on driving. The reason for that, that I give to everybody is, it's really weird, I'll be driving along and it's almost like I lose consciousness and everybody always, over the years, has always got so annoyed with me about this and said, well, just pull yourself together, just, just concentrate. But actually, it's incredibly debilitating not being able to drive. Mm. And the thought that they could, sorry, I thought they were oh. <laughs> um, that there could be a chance, I mean, it sounds so pathetic, but a chance that I could drive is <laughs> so pathetic. It's not pathetic. Because I feel really silly to my daughters. I feel really embarrassed. So you've, you've provided me with some really, really lovely examples of your childhood, the things that you experienced in school and how your deficits have impacted you as you've gone through life. And the symptoms that you exhibit are consistent with ADHD. I don't know why that makes me cry. <laughs> Sorry. Can I just say something to you from, from what I've picked up from talking to you today? We focus quite a lot on the deficits, you know, when we're looking at yeah. these symptoms because they do have a negative impact in, in somebody's life. But you are very typical of somebody with lots of ADHD symptoms that can be very positive for a person. Creativity, the ability to be able to um, work under pressure. So yeah. it's not all negative. So how could life be different then? We can treat ADHD with medication. If you tolerate and do well with medication, it can have real, really big life-changing effects. So the way what, that- be able to drive? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. is here who took me through that assessment yeah, yeah. and you know it's many many more questions than that and it's a yeah. it's a bizarre thing to go through your whole life from your childhood because I never really think back I am where I am and I've always said that to you lots mm. over the years haven't I and so to actually pause and be told that you could possibly forgive yourself for some of the stuff that you've given yourself so yeah. much. Like, I will, I will routinely walk around, oh, just me, oh, don't mind me, oh, I'm stupid, oh, I'm chaotic, oh, I'm this, oh, I'm that, I'm this. Oh, I've lost count of the times you yeah, said I'm stupid. Yeah, and that low self-esteem is a big thing for women and You're ADHD. So and, um, you know, when I burst into tears, Rebecca actually, I think, might have thought I was crying because I had ADHD. But actually, why I was upset was I couldn't accept that there was some sort of reason for this chaos, like, mm. all through my life. And because what happens is, basically, your brain doesn't produce enough dopamine. That's what happens in an ADHD brain. So something called your executive function, the thing that enables you to organise, to focus on the right things, so many, so many things involved in executive function just doesn't work in the way that it does. Like just you saying, well, I put my stuff in my bag, I put it through, and it's like, I'm looking at you like you're an alien. Because, because I, I because, <laughs> <laughs> because, 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 and it's funny because since I've put more stuff on my YouTube channel where you see the chaos upstairs because I keep stuff 
more or less tidy downstairs, but upstairs is actually my head. And people have gone, wow, how can you live like that? That's been all the sort of beginnings of my sort of wonderings around so I, it. Because I wanted to ask you, because obviously we, we all know each other. We're That's mates. my room. <coughs> We're yeah. mates and, you know, when you, we go out and you always turn up on time, mm. always turn up, very yeah. punctual, and you're the life and soul and you light up the room. Oh, thank you. But what is it back home that we're not seeing? What is it day-to-day -day life for you that, that not just, you know, an untidy room? What yeah. is it that troubles you? Well, what, what is so difficult is that the norm... So you say I'm always on time, but that doesn't come naturally to me. So for me to be on time, I'm checking 25 times. I'm setting off little alarms, I'm doing everything. And I work so hard and I go into blind panic if I'm going to be late, because I must not be late. Because that's the thing that I learned, it's bad if you're late. You know, there's lots of labels from a child that I, that I got that I've tried, yeah. tried to mark. So you've learned to mark. The huge yeah. thing, the unbelievable thing, and I got emotional with Rebecca at the time, was, was the compulsive eating, mm. which is a big part of ADHD, and actually Rebecca was talking to me earlier saying it's one of the things that she will ask straight away. Is that the same in men and women? Because I think as we're beginning to learn that the signs of ADHD tend to display differently, in, well, not just in men and women, but in every individual. There's no such thing as ADHD and everyone's the same. But broadly, there's a distinction, isn't there, between yeah, I think the way that men, and women... men and women... But Mark has ADHD and his is really bad, his compulsive eating. But the point is, is that you have a very high risk of addictive behaviour yeah. with ADHD. That's why it's so important. It's not just silly people running around and being silly. This, is, this can be quite a serious impact in life. You know, you, you poor well, function let, at school. Let me just list some of the, <coughs> some of mm. the um, symptoms, if that's the right word, I don't know. Uh, with men and boys, traits would be a better word, uh, causing them to be fidgety, disruptive, always in the go, restless, impulsive, impatient, prone to mood swings. But looking more at, at women and girls, because I know when you read this list, Denise, it really struck a chord with you. With every um, single box ticked. Yeah. Um, difficulty to pay attention to details, focus, listen, stay organised. Uh, Addictive behaviour. To remember things, an inability to keep time, feeling hypersensitive to rejection, emotional dysregulation, trouble maintaining friendships, Binge eating, overspending, and experiencing imposter syndrome, and indeed, and um, impulsive behaviour. And that's why, yeah. just generally speaking, people with ADHD have a shorter lifespan because of all those behaviours. So, overeating, addiction. I mean, but all you my know, boozing like when I was younger. Boozing, that lovely yeah. lady saying there, because in my family it used to be a joke that people would go to me, well, because the bin man wasn't very nice to you, you're, you're really upset. I would get so hypersensitive about someone that I didn't know. It, it's interesting because of what I take on Twitter now. Mm. But it, it, it's, it's quite... Um, it's very complex, yeah. I would say. Mm. If very, anybody, not everybody gets if it every resonates, symptom. No, exactly. And if any of this resonates with you, just, just investigate it a bit further because I am now on a pink cloud of this discovery and I'm finding out so much yeah. stuff and I have started medication and things are really changing. Well, that's me. great to yeah. know. And Fantastic just to say, Denise to has not had a diagnosis, but we're going to look into it. No, no, no. Um, well, I mean, absolutely, the first port of call is, is with your GP, if you do feel that this is something you'd like to explore. Okay. And just as a note, in England, um, under the NHS, you do have a right to choose your mental health care provider. There are long waiting lists, clearly, for these kind of diagnoses, but um, if you look into it, there may be other areas that you could go to whereby you might be able to, to get a swifter diagnosis. It's unlikely to be a quick process, it has to be said, on the NHS. Uh, but we do have loads of information about ADHD on our website, and you can see uh, the details below, so please do uh, note those down.